if we will pay attention to what our thoughts are, that will change our emotions, it'll change our attitudes, it will change our behaviors, and I would say, we'll change our life. So how is the wire, the wiring of the brain, how we are wired by God, how is that affected when God's Word is placed in there? Well, God's Word is life. Uh-huh. And as long as we are meditating on God's Word, learning His Word, reciting His Word, and, and that's a key component, Bob, is, is not just to read, but to utilize your other senses. So speaking it out loud. God's Word says that Our words have the power of life or death, Mm. blessing or cursing. And the more we speak certain words over ourselves, the more likely something's going to happen. So if I get up and think it's a rotten day, it's going to be a bad day, my brain will continue to meditate on that throughout the day. And chances are my perspective at the end of the day was that I had a pretty bad day. Mm -hmm. But we have the power to influence what kind of day we have by our words, by our thoughts, by our behavior. So when you think about different ways we can engage with God's Word, obviously we can listen to the Word of God, we can read the Word of God, we're told to meditate on the Word of God. So you're also talking about this element of speaking yes, the Word of God. So tell me how that really changes us and how one does it do we read the word out loud do we speak certain scriptures over a situation that we're facing how does that work let me give you an example from my own life i was deathly ill on medically induced bed rest for five months i was kept alive on iv hydration and nutrition i dwindled from 113 pounds down to a skeletal 74 and the longer i remained ill the more depressed I got. But it was during that time, Bob, I really could do nothing other than sleep, pray, listen to sermons online, listen to praise and worship music. But I started when I heard a verse. I might have read it. I might have heard a pastor speak it. A friend may have texted me. But when I heard a verse that resonated with my situation, I wrote it down on a Post-it note. And I put that Post-it note someplace that I would see it. And then every time I saw that Post-it note, I would read it out loud three times. And the reason for that is because scripture tells us that faith comes by hearing Mm -hmm. and hearing by the word of God. And as I did that over time, by the time it was all said and done, I had over a hundred post-it notes everywhere around my house, but my joy had returned. I was physically healthier and I was much closer to my savior. Mm. And is this the time period, the difficult time period that really led to the writing of this book. You are Today is going to be a good day. Right. Yes. It was during that time that as I saw myself as the doctor sinking into a pit of depression, it was eye opening that all the alphabet soup after my name wasn't enough to prevent me <laughs> from going down there. As a believer, that wasn't enough to prevent me from going down there. But one day, the night before surgery, a friend called and said, I know you know this. But I just want to remind you that although weeping lasts for the night, God's joy comes in the morning. And I wrote my very first Facebook, Today is Going to Be a Good Day post. And it was short, sweet, simple. Today is going to be a good day because God's joy comes in the morning. It resonated with people. A couple weeks later, I wrote another one. A couple weeks later, I wrote another one. And then over time, Bob, that's become a six-year daily ministry on Facebook and Instagram. 